Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to look at some YouTube analytics that sort of show, first of all, we're going to look at the analytics that show what you watch, and then I'm going to look at this new feature, which is YouTube's AI actually suggesting what you will watch in the future, and I think it's kind of it's kind of cool. I'm not sure it's there yet. So first of all, of course, we have this bit, which I, I think is cool. I really like they added this because a lot of people, but a lot of people will watch channel quite a bit, but they don't subscribe. So YouTube now tells you that. So uh, we can see that about 100,000 people have watched at least two videos on this channel and uh, 1 million have watched at least one. And then the subscriber count is over there. Uh, but then the interesting thing is we can see, so what does the audience watch? Well, uh, these are the first uh, picks, no text to speech. Uh, that's a Discord channel. This guy I really like, Mental Outlaw, Low Level Learning. Uh, this is a cool chat. This guy does low level C coding stuff. Retro Gaming Now, I don't really know that one. That's more of like a Minecraft mystery channel, DOS Dude 1. Uh, this guy has actually made some really cool macOS patches. And then we can get down Dave Scarage. He's a former Microsoft employee. And then... Mr. Epic, uh, and then these are more security focused. The PC Security Channel, I know that guy. Uh, Brody Robinson, Linux creator. Uh, Jeff Gearling, also a Linux creator, and and then uh, further down. So that's sort of an interesting one. And then we can see what videos. So people like Unknown Hacker, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting video. And then so this is a good place to get inspiration. And this has been around for a while, but but YouTube thinks they can do better than that. So what they've now come out with is what's available in the Inspiration tab. So in the Inspiration tab, we can get ideas for our next video. So it will basically, it won't write the video for you, but it'll provide quite a bit of information. And we can do this about anything. So these are some things that they think we would like. I, I don't think that, I, I don't think that really fits. Uh, testing, yes, definitely. Okay. Let's type that in and see if it gives any decent titles for that. Best way to protect, keep your PC safe for viruses. That is a video I will actually make. Antivirus software, destroying computer with viruses. Uh, definitely how to check for viruses on Windows 10. How to get rid of a virus. Installing 100 viruses. I tested malware against smartphones. I downloaded the most dangerous computer viruses. These are all some good titles. I tested malware against antiviruses. And then if you click one of these, it actually writes a little outline. Best way to protect. Now let's click outline. Okay. And now it gives us some actual titles. Five best antivirus apps for Windows 10. Now this is a terrible result. Uh, please. Okay. No. 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 Okay. These are not antiviruses. Both of these companies are okay, but they're not antiviruses. Okay, features of each antivirus app. Antivirus test score, free plan, range of protection, price. Which antivirus app is better, more affordable, feature rich? Okay, consider your needs, final verdict. So it's basically written a full outline. Now, it would be sort of interesting to copy this into something like ChatGP. I might do that in a second and see like if we could get a fully uh, AI-generated script that I could then look at. Uh, and then we can try other things. Like one it showed, which I actually think is a good idea because a lot of people are asking me about Linux, is how to install Arch Linux. So, how do we install Arch Linux? What is YouTube? Okay, <laughs> Google cannot install Arch Linux. Uh, a step-by-step -step guide to installing Arch Linux. Uh, but we can try other things. And it's not purely tied to like what, I'm just refreshing in case that's broken it. Okay, now it works. So, okay. So it's kind of kind of spawning out into the different things we could do. Yeah, this is actually actually pretty accurate. But not a bad outline. But we can also try it on totally unrelated things. Like we could do knit uh <laughs> and it and it will Tell us how to knit a shirt. And do you know these are not bad instructions? And we can copy the outline. We'll sort of stop short of like full content generation, but still. Uh, okay, uh, one of these is 
similar. So I guess it is still basing this off of like things that my audience uh, watches. Exploring the creepy side of Windows XP. Uh, okay, okay. That one seems like a bit of a, a fail. I was hoping it was gonna, because there's actually the, it's now safe to turn off your computer screen on XP can be kind of creepy. Let's try. Let's see what it thinks about. There are actually some videos from like YouTube gurus about how they're making AI with videos. How do you use chat GP? Okay, uh, here you go. Uh, YouTube is now going to teach you how to do YouTube automation. A examples of successful. <laughs> I, I, okay, okay. Um, I, I don't know if everyone knows like these YouTube automation gurus. Uh, the reason I'm kind of chuckling is be I, I assume this trained off of YouTube videos, of course. I'm kind of chuckling because it's like basically copied a YouTube guru script. And and I would say like 99% of this doesn't work. That you're not going to make money doing this. But okay, so how you can how you can use ChatGPT in uh, Canva to create faceless YouTube videos? Okay, that's actually pretty impressive. So it's actually pretty well trained on YouTube. I wonder if it's trained. I don't know if it's trained on like what makes videos good, but that's kind of kind of interesting. Okay, let's try let's try something totally different. Serial experiments lane anime because people people are asking because my channel profile picture is actually from that so people ask me a bit about that so making sense of serial experiments lane we couldn't generate topics for this idea uh okay that's piracy okay so we didn't get like i was curious if it would have Give me like an outline for social commentary on it. Let's just see if it will. We couldn't generate. I don't blame them. Uh, the, uh, the creator of Serial Experiments Lane said it was intended to, he thought that the American audience would find it confusing and the Japanese audience would get it, but ultimately both the American and Japanese audience found it to be confusing. Uh, but it's still, uh, it's something that, I, I think that's kind of the beauty of it. Let's try this keyword just because it did suggest it. But it really... Okay, so there's some sort of safety things on the outline. Oh, or it's just broken. Only, like, my beef with, like, the whole YouTube studio is that it's just kind of buggy. Like, when you go around your analytics, I, I don't know if this happens to anyone else. I'm sure it does. You just click around your analytics, and it suddenly you have to refresh the page, and you have to click the analytics tab again. Like, when I was trying to get that 90-day screenshot of my audience at the beginning... I, I went through like five cycles of refreshing the page. So I kind of wish they would fix that, but maybe they will. No, okay. Let me still couldn't generate it. I love how when it doesn't want to do it, it says, oh, well, in English. Try doing it in English. Using words. So I think it's got some sort of like a, a, a safety feature. Deleting system. What happens if you delete oh, that system just takes us straight to the video. System. Okay, let's try. Let's try that. <laughs> let's see if it knows this one. Uh, no. Okay. Oh no. Ah. Uh, okay. So, what is System Thirty Two? That's why it says that you should you should be a bit careful with this. System32 is a folder in Windows that contains essential files. It's important for Windows to run properly. Delete System32 can cause Windows to crash. Why you might want to delete System32? It can take up a lot of space. It can be a toolkit for malware. Deleting System32... Is this like a... Okay, the only way deleting System32 improves your performance is because you delete Windows and you install a better operating system. Like, no. You can delete System32 using the disk cleanup tool. Uh, no, you can't. You can delete it manually. Be careful not to delete, but, but I want to delete System32. What happens when you delete System32? <laughs> Windows will stand up in safe mode. Um, you will need to restore System... Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, yes. No. Okay. Uh, so there, there we go. Um, so I actually, all joking aside, I actually quite like this feature. Some of them were pretty good, and 
but but you do have to you do have to pay attention which you do with any sort of ai tool uh, it's it's cool because it seems like it's pretty it's pretty in tune with like what people actually do in terms of youtube videos but sometimes it can go okay now just to finish off the video i thought i would read a chat gpt generated script that was a result of using this tool i, I thought that why is Windows Vista so bad was a pretty good one, so now we can read this. Windows Vista's development history. In the early 2000s, Microsoft embarked on an ambitious journey to create a successor to its widely successful operating system, Windows XP. This new project was codenamed Longhorn, and it was intended to be a major overhaul, incorporating a host of new features and improvements. After several delays and much anticipation, Windows Vista was officially released to the public in January of 2007. Windows Vista's features. Upon its release, Windows Vista introduced a brand new Windows interface called Arrow, which featured a more visually appealing design with translucent windows, new icons, and live thumbnails. The aim was to provide a more modern and aesthetically pleasing user experience compared to its predecessor. In addition to the new interface, Vista came with several performance improvements. It boosted faster search capabilities, better memory management, and an overall enhanced security performance. One of the most significant upgrades was in security. Vista introduced user account control, a feature designed to prevent unauthorized changes to the system by requiring user consent for certain administrative tasks. This was a response to the growing concerns about security vulnerabilities in Windows XP. Despite these promising features, Windows Vista quickly garnered a reputation for being problematic. One of the most common complaints was its bugginess. Users frequently reported system crashes, software incompatibilities, and other issues that hindered the overall user experience. Another significant problem was Vista's performance. Contrary to Microsoft's claims of improved speed, many users found the operating system to be slow and resource-hungry. This was particularly evident on older hardware, where Vista's advanced features could severely impact system performance. Compatibility issues further compounded these problems, Vista was notorious for its lack of compatibility with many existing hardware and software products. This forced many users to either upgrade their equipment or revert to the more stable Windows XP. Windows Vista's legacy. Despite its myriad issues, Windows Vista was eventually replaced by Windows 7 in 2009. Windows 7 was praised for addressing many of Vista's shortcomings and providing a more stable and efficient user experience. Despite its rocky start, Windows Vista has left a lasting legacy. Some users still fondly remember it for its groundbreaking features and ambitious design, which paved the way for future innovations in subsequent Windows operating systems. The value of understanding Windows Vista. Understanding the history of Windows Vista offers valuable insights into the evolution of operating systems and the challenges faced in software development. By examining Vista's features and the problems it encountered, one can appreciate the lessons learned that contributed to the success of later operating systems like Windows 7. Additionally, exploring Vista's legacy helps in recognizing its role in shaping the modern computing landscape despite its initial failures. In summary, Windows Vista's story is a testament to the complexities of developing a major operating system. It highlights both the potential for innovation and the pitfalls that can arise from ambitious technological endeavors. Through its history, features, problems, and legacy, Windows Vista remains an important chapter in the ongoing narrative of computing history. So let me know in the comments below whether you think that was a good script or not. Uh, written by OpenAI's ChatGPT, and the outline was written by YouTube's uh, content outline. My, my main thing, and I don't know where it comes from, is, and maybe it would be better to use a positive script, but it seems like there's sort of an inherent positivity bias where it tries to steer it towards why Windows Vista, like, is half of this why Windows Vista was bad ends up being why Windows Vista was good, which is kind of strange. Not that they're wrong, it's just kind of interesting.